MRCEM OSCE course. Preparatory for the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. UK OSCE exam. Website www.mrcemoscecourse.com. Facebook page MRCEM OSCE course. Hello everybody. I am Dr. Mohammed Abdul Ghani Siddiq. I am co-founder and instructor of MRKM OSCE course, which is preparatory for the Royal College of Emergency Medicine OSCE exam. Today, I'm going to uh, speak about eye examination, which is frequently appearing in station in the OSCE exam. And uh, it's relatively easy station and you need to pass it in order to pass the exam. So I will start typically my station from outside the examination room. I have one minute for, to read the scenario and uh, arrange my thoughts. Usually the, the scenario will be of a patient coming with usually loss of vision, but sometimes just eye pain. Uh, patient with loss of vision and uh, you need to take focus history, uh, perform eye examination and formulate management plan. So once you get inside the room, wash your hands, introduce yourself and confirm patient identity and uh, then you need to take consent for the examination and to confirm that the patient is pain free and if you need painkiller and also call for chaperone then ask him uh, start taking history by asking focused questions basically in eye exam station I need to ask only three questions is there is loss of vision if he said yes, then is it unilateral or bilateral? Is it painful or painless? And is it permanent or temporary? This is the only three questions you need to ask in this station. Then immediately proceed to do the eye examination. I have four tasks to complete and three to mention that I would like to do. The four tasks to complete is to check the visual acuity, then visual field, then eye movement, and then pupils. The three to complete the exam is checking the retina by ophthalmoscope and checking the color vision using Ishihara blades and examine the eye by slit lamp using fluorescent dye. So we will start by assessing the visual acuity. This is the vital sign of the eye and it is checked by the Snelling chart. You need to, to let the patient stay at 6 meters from the Snelling chart and close one eye and ask him to cutely read the last row and then uh, change to the other eye. If he can't, and this is theoretically, let him uh, come to three meters. If still he cannot see one meter, then if he can, uh, let him uh, count your fingers. And if still unable, uh, just light perception. But during the exam, Usually, they will count it from 6 meters. Then, uh, you need quickly to proceed to assess the visual acuity. And this is very important because sometimes if uh, the, the patient has a stroke and uh, you don't assess the visual acuity, you might refer him to ophthalmology as eye problem. So, you need to assess uh, the visual acuity, uh, the visual field, sorry. Uh, by the confrontation test, assess the nasal and temporal uh, portions of his vision uh, bilaterally. Okay, uh, every time uh, in one eye. 
sometimes the patient might have hormonal hemianobia or by temporal hemianobia or other pathologies. Then proceed to assess the eye movement uh, by assessing the extraocular muscles, uh, the third, fourth, and sixth nerves, extra, uh, the <coughs> cranial nerves, and then assess the pupils. Pupillary assessment, you need to assess each pupil for the direct response and then assess the other one for the conscient, consensual response. Then the swinging test for relative afferent pupillary defect and then accommodation. Regarding the relative afferent pupillary defect, uh, usually when you shine the light, this is by the swinging test, when you shine the light to, the, to one pupil, it should constrict immediately. But if when shining the light into it, uh, it, be, uh, it be, uh, became relatively uh, dilated, this is called relative afferent pupillary defect. And this indicates uh, optic nerve problem. The most uh, uh, important differential diagnosis for relative afferent pupillary defect for us in the exam is optic neuritis. Okay, let us proceed. Now, accommodation. Accommodation, ask the patient to look uh, to uh, far uh, object there and then to your nose, uh, to your finger near his nose, and assess the pupils. They should uh, uh, converge and constrict. If not, then uh, there is many causes also for uh, impaired accommodation, uh, like neurosyphilis. But you need only to mention the test and go quickly. Now, you completed the main four tasks. Just mention that you would like to assess the back of the eye, the retina, by uh, ophthalmoscope. Sometimes the examiner will ask you to do so, and sometimes they will say, uh, then proceed. But be prepared to do the uh, ophthalmoscopic examination. It's very easy. First, mention that you would like, you would like to uh, dilate the pupil using mitritic eye drops like tropicamide uh, drops 1% if there is no contraindication like uh, acute angle closure glaucoma and also you need to dim the light and take consent from the patient that you would like to examine the back of his eye and that you are going to shine the light into his eye and it's uh, a little bit uncomfortable then first, uh, um, when assessing the right eye, you need to use your right hand and your right eye and vice versa. If you would like to assess the left eye, then you need to assess uh, that you need to uh, use your left hand and by your left eye. Then first, uh, stand just beside the patient and uh, look for the red reflex. If lost, there is differential diagnosis for, uh, for which, like uh, cataract, and theoretically, retinoblastoma or vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment also can cause. Then inform the patient that you, you are going to come closer to him to assess the eye from inside by the ophthalmoscope while putting your thumb over his forehead to just prevent any trauma by the ophthalmoscope to the patient face. And try to assess the optic nerve. Usually it will be in the nasal aspect, which, which is the uh, middle aspect of the eye. If you can't find the optic uh, disc, then try to follow the blood vessels and go nasally. After assessing the optic nerve, optic disc, sorry, then assess the four quadrants of the retina, the 
superior nasal aspect, the inferior nasal, and then superior temporal and inferior temporal, and then assess the macula by asking the patient to look to the right, and this should be very brief, and then uh, stop. Then thank him again for that, and mention just mention that you would like to assess the other eye by ophthalmoscope. After that, uh, just mention that you would like to complete examination by um, assessing the <coughs> uh, color vision using Ishihara blades and also you would like to assess the eye by state lamp using fluorescein dye. Then thank the patient, tell him that you completed your examination and um, usually they will ask you about the problem you can inform them about the differential diagnosis or the examiner might come and ask you about your differential diagnosis and management plan. So, uh, and sometimes they will show you photos in this uh, station. So be prepared. Usually, the differential diagnosis of painful loss of vision is a straightforward. We have acute ankle, ankle closure glaucoma temporal arthritis and optic neuritis. If young female with painful uh, permanent uh, unilateral loss of vision, this is most likely to be optic neuritis, but other differential, I will mention that other differential like um, acute angle closure glaucoma and even temporal arthritis uh, just down the list. If elderly, then I will put acute angle closure glaucoma and temporal arthritis on the top of my differential diagnosis and then I will mention the remaining uh, possible causes. Regarding uh, permanent painless loss of vision, unilateral loss of vision, the differential is central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, uh, vitreous hemorrhage and retinal, retinal detachment. And usually, the examiner will show you a photo of um, central retinal artery occlusion. Okay. Uh, regarding unilateral, um, painless, temporary loss of vision, this is amorosus vogax, and this is transient ischemic attack. You need to assess the ABCD2 score quickly. If the score is four or more, then the patient needs to be started on aspirin, 300 milligram, and he needs within 24 hours to perform CT brain and neurology follow-up. If less than four, then start him on aspirin, and within one week, you need to be, he needs uh, CT brain and neurology follow-up. So this is everything regarding uh, eye examination station, which is very easy as I stated earlier. Thank you very much.